Good morning and welcome everybody to our daily live trading webinar. We call it real-time daily trading ideas, five days, five traders. We would like to screen the markets, creating some interesting uh, trading ideas and answering your questions. But first of all, here our risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposit. They may be not be subtitled for everyone, so please be aware that all we are showing and presenting here today is just a personal opinion and not an advice for investing. Yes, as I said to the beginning, today is Monday, today with Jay, uh, later more about Jay and his trading style. So here are a quick overview of our offerings. So maybe for example here our bestseller, the DEX30, with a typical fixed spread of only 0.8 points during the main trading hours. So, and if you have some additional question, feel free to contact us. Um, here you can see our telephone number and also our email. So um, feel free to contact us if you have additional questions. And uh, yes, that's it for the moment. All these webinars are recorded, so they are later. You will find it on our YouTube channel, so free, feel free to check this out too. So here's a picture from Jay. Jay, uh, good morning to you. I hope the sound is well and you can hear me. All right, last trade, last trade we had was long Canadian dollar versus Japanese yen. We may recall our reasons where we had strong numbers on Friday of that prior week and we had a good uh, positive expectation, yada, 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 we had risk on tone and the trade structure was that we watch for bottom edges. Now, what I want you to uh, see here is initially we said start a position right here, I hope you can see this, and then um, the second position um, at a lower space. Um, so what happened is that, uh, let, let me get the drawing tool out. We got the starter position on right here, uh, right here, and then the market actually went up, but, but into a prior known top edge, and then my traders know how to watch this price action up here in combination with volume, in combination with volume profile, and we were rejected. So then we came down to an area that was prior known with a stop run right here and we went higher again. But it is Monday morning and this was a trade based on last week's assumptions and expectations. So we took profits and we actually ended up making a little bit of money. All I'm trying to show you here is in an institution we never really trade outright. That means we buy something and then we hedge versus something else. So in this case, you might put a curve trade against it or you might put futures or options against it. If we are uh, trying to show you guys how to trade more like an institution, and one of the main things is that a market reacts at a level um, that is not unknown to us because the price levels that we see on a chart are actually um, translated uh, yield differentials and currencies follow yields as I told you guys several times in the past. So that price is reacted at the top edge and at the former top edge which was now which was now fair value is no surprise to us. But what is a surprise to us is that we, we had the sell-off right here. So this was based on news, negative Canadian news. So we can't keep a trade open where the facts and assumptions have changed. But by trading like an institution and splitting up your risk into several positions, you're actually then able um, to make life a little bit easier for you and to generate more money even though you are approaching trading on a more conservative basis. If the trade performs for you, then you add risk. Okay. So the, the demo account that we put up for Jens and Admiral um, has a profit factor of 4.17. We had 60% winners, which is really the bottom of what an institutional trader should dish out. Obviously, we didn't have that many trades, so it's not that representative yet. But what I wanted to show is we've been doing this for two months. Showing a trade idea on a Monday, which is basically friggin' insane, okay, because it's construction day. So on a Monday, I have to commit to a trade, and I don't even personally trade on a Monday, yet we're still generating 1% per month uh, and uh, a drawdown of uh, not 6 4%. And as you can see here, our average winner is twice the size of our average loser, and that is important. And here again, an institutional investor will want to focus on your drawdown. 
They don't care that much about how much yield you generate because 1% is plenty. In fact, this morning I did some research and I found another institution that is like a startup that is offering retail traders like you guys funding. Okay, So they're all coming out of the woods right now and they're all offering, hey, if you guys can generate some money for us, we'll give you money. Like I said before, the problem is not that there's not enough money out in the world. The problem is there's not enough good traders that actually know how to make money with money. And so what you want, these guys, that, that was my point, these guys want 0.85% yield per month. Okay, So they give you a million dollars and they expect for you to make $8,500 per month out of that. So a percent per month is plenty. And you saw that in November we underperformed a little bit, but in December we outperformed a little bit. So um, basic, 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 basic institutional process trading. So let's dig into the process. What did we see overnight? As you can see, we saw some massive New Zealand dollar strength and we've seen some weakness in the US dollar. So this week we have plenty of central banks with decisions. We'll look at that in a second. But the first thing that I want you to do when you come to the desk on a Monday morning and you see this, your first question has to be why? Why the hell did we see this strength in the New Zealand dollar? And then you dig into the news and you find out why. And then you make up your mind if this is going to continue or not. Is this a macro event or a micro event? If it's a macro event, institutions need to trade a market lower in order to take it higher based on increased demand and vice versa. If our analysts are telling us that the markets are going to come off, and that means fall, then we need to take it higher in anticipation for selling pressure from our institutional clients. Okay, It's very simple. That's the game, guys. All right, major, major news today and this week. By the way, I have no idea what we're doing next Monday um, because this is the last week of trading. Really, I'm closing down my book as well. But I'm happy if you guys have some questions, write them in. Write us the questions and maybe we'll do a little bit of 15 to 20 minutes answering questions next week. Because rest assured, there's not much liquidity. The big boys are heading out to the Hamptons and uh, the juniors are manning the desks and uh, everyone is getting into the Christmas mode. So we have uh, the Fed this week, we have the SNB, we have the Bank of England and we have the ECB. Yeehaw! What a week! But um, unfortunately, not much volatility expected. Oh, that's right. That's the squawk. I apologize. So here we go. What's on the agenda this week? The Fed is expected to hike for a third time, and this hike is priced in by 90 spot 2 percent. So nothing new. Um, Kashkari is expected to descend as well as Evans was recently cautious. This, guys, could be very well a buy the rumor, sell the fact situation. It could be. I'm not saying it is, but it could be. So please don't be surprised if they hike and the dollar weakens on the back of it for now. Then we'll have some growing concern among members regarding inflation. Um, so on Thursday, um, uh, the, this is supposed to be Thursday, the five-year, five-year forward inflation expectation rate, say that three times in a hurry, was at 2%. So that's good. That's what the Fed is looking at, the five-year, five-year forward inflation expectation swap rate, but it's not good enough. So will the ongoing recovery be reflected in the statement? This is what the market is looking at since the hike is already priced in. And the next point that I want you to know is the so-called dot plots. If you don't know what dot plots are, please Google it. Okay? The median of the dot plots could be moved up to four hikes next year, if that is the case then we don't have buy the rumor, sell the fact, but we could see some US dollar strength because currently the market is more likely pricing in three hikes next year and not four. Why potentially four? Because the tax cuts could have some positive ramification. We are seeing a little bit of recovery in inflation. Again, watch the five-year, five-year forward inflation expectation swap rate. And we're having continued lower unemployment rate in the US. We're at full employment. And then again, of course, it's Yellen's last presser. Presser is press release. So the expectation is for her to give a balanced tone and talk about gradual policy tightening that her new in command Powell actually already confirmed to. ECB, let's talk about the ECB. Thursday, minimum bid rate and presser. So we expect no change. The expectation is that the asset purchasing programs, the APP, may be tilted a bit more towards corporate bonds. Why? Because we have almost bought up all sovereign bonds 
not all, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we are reaching certain limits according to the purchasing key, which you can read up on on the ECB website. The expectation is for the rates to remain on hold long after this APP program has concluded. Inflation forecast is expected to be revised a bit higher. Why? Because oil prices since the last projections increased by 20%. So the forecast that the ECB is going to hand out in terms of economic growth is also expected to be revised a little bit higher. Why? Because the leading economic indicators in Europe continue to point towards growth and continued strength. So inflation uh, projections could be raised and economic growth expectations could be raised. Please someone count how many times I use the word expectation in these Monday morning meetings, okay? Six to 18 months in the future, we trade based on current expectations. Expectations change, positioning changes. Your job is to read the chart at that point in time to be in the correct pair or asset class and it's not Bitcoin at the moment. <laughs> okay, you should, should have been long Bitcoin a long time ago. I think we did months and months ago, we did a morning espresso on Bitcoin. Anyhow, uh, another focus by traders will be on the assumed euro dollar rate. That will be another focus. For September, the ECB stated one spot one eight. So we'll have a look what the assumed rate is in their projections this time. And last but not least, let's have a quick look at the Bank of England. Thursday is the uh, bank rate vote and it's expected to be a non-event. We don't even have a press conference, okay? Voting split will be in focus. So who voted what? Last time we had McCaffrey and Saunders who voted last time for a rate hike and we had that rate hike, you may recall. And this time we expect them to vote for another hike or have voted at that point in time. But Cunliffe and Deputy Director Ramsden, Deputy Governor, wanted to keep rates unchanged last time uh, as they have differing views on wage growth. They think that the models of the Bank of England, by the, ba the Bank of England models are too optimistic in regards to wage growth. And I actually agree with these two guys. So if the vote split comes in differently, and you can look this up on uh, Forex Factory, then you may see volatility in the pound and a trading opportunity. The market currently expects another hike in the fourth quarter of next year. Now, if economic growth strengthens, if uh, inflation does not come off, inflation, is, this week we have an inflation number for the UK, it's crucially important, it's expected at 3%. If it comes in higher, then that means that the Bank of England's inflation models are wrong because they said inflation peaks at 3.2% in October of this year. If we see that it didn't peak, that it comes in higher, please, please, please guys, long the pound, okay? That's a no-brainer at that point in time. If we see a, a significant deviation higher, if we see lower inflation, then the model has predicted correctly, and we may not, may not see a, a, a massive increase in, in uh, volatility in the pound, because then it comes as expected. All right. SMB, uh, okay, I have one more central bank that we're looking at, which is the SMB, and it is expected to keep the rates on hold. Why? Jordan recently noted the franc remains highly valued and policy is still aimed at weakening the franc despite the recent reduction in value. So what does that mean? The market expects the SMB to protect the very, very soft uptrend in inflation that they finally see, and they're not going to mess with rates. Historically, that used to be the problem by the Bank of Japan. Anytime we had a little bit of uh, economic recovery, they would start hiking rates and the whole house of cards fell together. So uh, that's the positive thing about the Bank of Japan. They just keep uh, easing and easing and easing into this economic recovery. They still continue easing. Very good. All right. Um, CFTC cut positioning and vol. I'm looking at the two-year history range. The euro, the dealers are coming off slightly from their extreme short positioning, um, but they're still short. So uh, keep that in mind. And the Swissy, the dealers are coming off slightly of their significant long positioning. Okay, that's good, fine. And the Kiwi, dealers are still extremely long. And this is a reminder to myself, act. I was gonna buy the Kiwi three weeks ago, and I got so caught up with other shit, it's, uh, sorry, it, it's unbelievable. It's already moving. Um, overnight it moved because the central bank announced its new governor, and that's Adrian Orr, and he's a pretty good guy, um, very, very, very experienced, and he starts March 27th of uh, next year. So that is why we're seeing this uh, uh, upturn in the New Zealand dollar. 
volatility, the euro has decreased, the pound has increased, of course. I mean, the pound reacts to every bit of news headline that is coming across the squawk. It's, uh, it's great, great, great volatility trading last week, really good opportunities. The yen volatility is collapsing a little bit and equities are coming off as well. The year-end rally is resumed. I hope you all saw that opportunity in buying Japanese equities, uh, the Nikkei 225 at uh, weekly and daily support uh, a few days ago, awesome opportunity to long that one, okay? So the fundamental um, direction of Japanese equities is long, just uh, so you heard it. GU, long for Monday, that was based on the risk reversals and based on put call ratios for the, we had a bullish sentiment on Monday based on the derivatives traders in Euro Yen, Pound Yen and Aussie Yen but we had bearish sentiment by the derivatives traders regarding gold, okay? Potential trades this week, long New Zealand dollar versus Swissy. Why? Kiwi, uh, we have this new RBNZ governor announced, Adrian Orr, and we have very, very positive cut positioning, so we're trying to get long the Kiwi. And Swissy, we do have risk on tone, and uh, next to the Japanese yen, treasuries, and gold, the Swiss franc is a safe haven, and if we have risk on into the Christmas rally, which I'm expecting to happen, then uh, you can uh, rest assured that the Swissy may see some weakness. And we have this week's S&B expected to remain dovish, okay? Trade structure, we're watching for pullbacks. We're keeping an eye on sentiment. And the risk to our trade is naturally that the New Zealand government is interfering with the positive tone in the currency right now and that we have a risk off event that sour sentiment and yen and Swiss franc, for example, would see capital inflows on the back of that. So this is the trade right here. Um, as you can see, we have a roll reversal right here, so we're expecting the market to come down. Um, we don't chase, the, I don't chase the market. You can do whatever you want. Uh, in fact, you should be doing your own work and coming up with your own trades, obviously. So this is expectation number one and expectation if we're coming off, then I'd like to grab that liquidity down here. That's how I would do it if it was still at the bank and then take it up higher because I know BlackRock and all their buddies are calling me and they all wanna be long New Zealand dollar, potentially. That's it from my side. Let me see if you had some, uh, if we had some questions, no, we don't. Sorry for the tech problems this morning, guys. I don't know how much I um, uh, uh, took you, uh, uh, how much time I took away from, from our morning meeting. If I don't see you, oh, well, I guess we speak next week. Send in some questions, guys. Let's do something fun next week. There's no uh, need in risking hard-earned uh, tax money uh, when the big boys aren't really uh, at the desk. I hope uh, you have a great, great last week of trading. Let's make some pips, guys. and, and uh, the main point that I can tell you is watch your drawdowns, okay? I had another email from one of my traders this week. The guy was doing excellent, excellent, excellent. Then I praise him and then he completely screws it up, gets into a trade without doing the work, realizes that he did an entry error and instead of 1%, his position was 10% and the rule is you immediately exit a position when you mess up, immediately. Instead of taking the immediate exit, my trader then went ahead and started hoping, started adding to the losing position, and in the end, lost 20% of the account. That is a nightmare. So that's the big benefit that you have at a fund or at a bank. You always have traders around you, and you always have a risk manager. If you trade at home on your own, you, you, your own worst enemy, are always sitting with you. And uh, if I could ask you, if I would look at you right now physically, I would ask hands in the air who did a trading mistake like that in the past and who ruined a lot of performance by making an error like that. And I'm sure a lot of us would raise their hands and say, yes, here, I did that and I've done that. And by the way, that's normal, okay? And that's absolutely normal. Um, the, the key is, don't, don't, don't try to experience that more than once. Otherwise, this may not be a profession that you're cut out to, which is also fine. Um, it's a very difficult profession. But once you get the process down, as you can see, even trading at the worst day of the week on a Monday, we can still generate return on equity. 
thank you very guys um, guys for your attention have a great week have a wonderful week i'm off to the christmas market soon for another glühwein and i'm meeting another trading educator today and i want to ask him for some guidance how he managed to teach you guys because that's the purpose of what we're doing thanks admiral thanks guys jens over to you have a great christmas if i don't hear and see one or two of you next week merry christmas happy new year uh, if you want to send in some questions, let's do that next week. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay, Jay. Uh, thanks here for screening the markets and showing us some fundamental data this week. So, um, yeah, guys, unfortunately, we have uh, to the beginning some technical problems, but it went well in the end. So, I hope you have some um, great news here from Jay uh, for the week. So, um, yeah, thanks for the listeners here today. And, yeah, of course, you can send us our um, question for maybe next week. I think this is a good idea. So, um, just mail us your question at info at admiralmarkets.de so um, feel free for the next week here to send us some additional question for the webinar for Christmas so yeah thanks again Jay and all to you listeners have a good day and a good start in the trading week this week be aware of all these uh, fundamental dates this week as Jay is uh, showing us here today that's that for the moment uh, tomorrow again with our trading webinar here you are welcome to like every day so have a good day and see you bye